friends, welcome back. Today's Bible study topic is Teach Us How to Pray. It's taken from the Bible app and it's written by Rob White. The Bible app is a really great tool to have. It has different versions of the Bible. It is portable. It's always on your phone, so you can take it wherever you're going. If you need a Bible break, there it is. You have it. Also, if you're a person who don't like reading, the Bible has audio. There's some Bibles there with audios, so you can listen instead. And if there's a translation that's not clear enough for you, you can switch to one that works perfect for you. And a lot of people like the King James Version. And yes, the King James Version is there also. In today's lesson, has three Bible scriptures that we will be reading in related, relating to teaching us to pray. These three Bible scriptures are Matthew 6, verse 5 to 8, 1 John 5, verse 3, and Luke 11, verse 1. Today's lesson covers a little about showing up mess. You know, a lot of people like praying and being, talking on top of their voice and trying to be eloquent for the people around them. Because one of the things they missed is that prayer is not entertainment. Prayer is not entertainment. It is a time for fellowship and communication with the Almighty God, with the Sovereign Lord. And God is not deaf. I just like saying that. Because prayer is not a monologue. It's not a one-way communication. Prayer is actually where you pray and worship and listen for God to speak. If you're new to praying, you will eventually learn to hear from God by reading his word, praying, and worshiping it. That's just like the most awesome experience the first time when you realize that God actually speaks and he, he's speaking to you. All right, so remember that date because you can pray anywhere at any time. But there's such a reverence, such a feeling if you have a meeting place with God at a regular time and a quiet place. It gives you so much more exhilaration and makes you energetic because you're coming, you know, out of the presence of the Lord. If you can find yourself a nice little spot that's quiet where you just go and talk to God the Father, God your friend, whatever you see Mass, but He's the Lord Almighty, He's still our friend. You find a quiet place. It doesn't have to be in your closet like where I pray. It can be in your car. Because there's sometimes when I can't pray in my closet, but I need time with God. So I just get in my car and go drive around a little and just pray, especially if it's desperate prayers. Another thing to remember, a prayer comes from the heart. And that's what God hears. So all this eloquent long talking is not necessary. But when you pray, try to line up the words of your mouth with the meditation of your heart so that it is acceptable to God. And why I'm saying that God is a spirit. And so when we pray, we must communicate or worship God in spirit and in truth. And this is found in John 4, 24. Rob White wrote this and segmented it in three different categories of prayers. It's three categories or three Ds, right? So first category is desire. The second is discipline and the third is delight. He says first you have to have the desire to pray to God. You have to have the desire to want to talk with the Lord. And once you have this desire it is good to act on it. But sometimes we want to pray, we want to meet with the Lord but there are distractions. And so to overcome these distractions it is important that we are disciplined. We're disciplined to put away the distraction. We're disciplined enough to turn off the noise. We're disciplined enough to take ourselves away from that and go pray regardless. In that discipline is the second D. The third D is delight. 
once we get into that presence of God, and being in his presence will be delightful. As I said before, it makes you energized and it makes you feel so refreshed. I cannot explain it, but you will find for yourself that when you spend some time in the presence of the Lord, he empowers you and let you know that you can move mountains and you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. He clarifies issues. He explains problems and he level mountains and make you realize that some of these things that was bothering us is nothing at all to God. God is the God of the impossible. I would recommend that you get yourself a little journal, a prayer journal, and you start writing what you're about to pray for. Because in Habakkuk 2, verse 2 and 3, it says you're to write your vision, make it plain, run with it because it will surely come to pass. So when you write down your prayer request and keep it as a reference, you will see that God is a God who is true to his words. He answers prayers. And this will strengthen your faith. And this will let you know that it's, it's good to go to God about everything in prayer. So let's start reading what the scripture says. Right? Matthew 6, verse 5 to 8. It talks about... Being, you know, as we talk about a lot of people trying to be eloquent and forgetting the real reason they're there in prayer talking to God. And so it reads like this. It says, when you pray, don't be like the hypocrites who love to pray publicly on the street corners and in the synagogues. Right? He says, um... They do this because they want everyone to see them. But God is saying that is all the reward they will get. He says, when you pray, you should go away by yourself. Shut the door behind you and pray to God your Father in private. And he says, then God the Father who sees everything will reward you. Verse 7 says, when you pray, you should not be babbling or repeating things over and over as some people think that they should do. Because this is not really what gets your prayers answered. It's not repeating the stuff. God already knows what we're praying for, even before we go to ask him. Another verse says that while we're praying, he is still, he is answering us. That is just so blessed to know that. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. First John 5, verse 3, addresses the first commandment, where the first commandment says that you are to worship the Lord God alone, and him only shall you serve. First John 5, verse 3 says, Love God means keeping his commandments. And his commandment is not burdensome. And you'll find that spending time with God in prayer is delightful and not burdensome. 11 verse 1 teaches us that while we need to learn to pray, and here the disciples saw Jesus praying, and they went up to him and said, Lord Jesus, please teach us to pray just like old John taught his disciples. And if you read the Bible, especially the New Testament, you will realize that Jesus prayed about everything. And again, just to summarize what we learned today, today we learned the reason why we should pray, how we should pray, and the benefits of praying. Tomorrow or the next video will go further into the benefits of praying and again why we should pray. All right, so if you like this video, if this video helped you somewhat, please like and share with your friends. Even if it doesn't help you, it may help someone else. All right, so you remember to stay, take care, stay prayed up, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Stay blessed.